おいおいおいおい待て待てはい Here's a video of the tops reacting to the bottoms wearing their jersey. I know this concept has been done before so it's not my original idea but it's my take on it. I tried to make it as canon as possible but you know sometimes you get carried away. Anyway, I hope you enjoy this while I'm in the midst of making Paranoia Part 3. This is not SFW but also not NSFW so if you're not comfortable please click away. If you're still here, may Asagesus be with you. Okay enough blabbering. Daisuga. Having just gotten out of the shower, Daichi was looking for his jersey and realized it wasn't in his closet. Koshi. So Amura. Did you see my... Your what? I found it. Why? Why are you? Sugar looked down and grabbed the jersey's collar. Oh this? Yeah don't I look good in it? Daichi pressed his lips together folding his arm as he reluctantly answered. MHM. Sorry did you wanna use it? Just as Sugar grabbed the edge of the jersey ready to take it off, Daichi walked up to the setter and grabbed his wrist stopping him. No, you are not. You look good in my shirt. I know right? Yeah. Keep it on, while I ruin you. Thanks. Wait what? Daichi grabbed Suga's face, lifting his head and forcing them to lock eyes. You heard me. Before the silver-haired boy could speak, he felt lips pressed up against his, as a hand started wrapping the back of his neck. Sorry can't help it, you look too fucking good. I will I. Iwezumi was studying in the study room as Oikoa crept up behind the ace wearing the jersey. Iwa-chan. Fuck, Jesus. Don't do that. Shitakoa. He oops. Iwezumi sighed knowing his boyfriend needs attention and spun around shifting his focus onto the setter who was standing by the door with only his jersey on. Come he. Um? Come where? There? As Ikoa started walking towards the ace, he stopped in his tracks when Iwezumi spoke. Wait. No. Stay there. Do not come any closer. What? Are you mad that I'm wearing your jersey? No. Then what's the problem? You. If you come here, I don't think I can hold back. Or does this arouse the incredible siege of ace? Shitty core if you wanted attention, your normal milkbread PJs would have done fine. Ouch, I can hear you discriminating my beloved pajamas ha Jim May. Sarcastically responding, waving his hand, Okura walked closer to a blushing Iwezumi and leaned forward, resting both hands on the ace's lap, squeezing his thighs. Well well look at that. Someone's really tensed. Okay that's it. Iwezumi stood up and pinned Oikoa against the wall. Using one hand to hold both the setter's hand above his head, while his other hand was tracing the outline of his own jersey. You know a hug and kiss would have sufficed? Where's the fun in that? Well I hope you don't have any plans tomorrow Toru. Huh? What does that have anything to do? It's not like you'll be able to walk after this. Shit. Matsuhana. Madsen was on his phone, waiting for Maki to show up at the park for their weekend date, his spiker coming over half an hour late. I say Matsukura. Takahiro Hanamaki. You're late. The middle blocker responded still glued to his phone as he heard Maki's footstep got closer. Sorry I couldn't decide on what to wear. Huh? It's just a park, any shirt would have been. Madsen looked up and saw that the spiker was wearing his jersey, instantly dropping his phone. Oh I. Idiot. I got this phone for your birthday. If you don't want it I'll take it back. Maki leaned forward to pick up the phone. Not my fault someone was so distractingly good looking. Ha. Huh. Which brat is taking your attend? Oh I. It's you. You moron. Oh. Ah right. The jersey. You better not make it stink. Fuck you. Sure. Where? No like fuck you fuck you. Yeah and I asked where. I hate you. You love me. Madsen used one hand and grabbed Maki by the waist, pulling him close, till they were practically chest to chest. His other was cupped on Maki's cheeks as he used his thumb to trace the undeniably obvious pink flush that was surfacing. You look good in my number. I look better on top of you. Alright fuck this date. We're going home. Wait. No. Kagehina. 
It was a Sunday, but being the volleyball fanatic they were, Kageyama and Hinata decided to go back to the gym and practice their freak duo set spike combo. The setter thought to himself. Shit guess I'm a little early. Kageyama. I guess not. Being so early in the morning, Kageyama couldn't match up to the small spiker's energy. Scratch that, no one can match up to the tangerine's energy on any day. Yeah I'm here. You ready to pull off that long spike to the left we've always talked about? Kageyama could literally hear the orange-haired boy bounce his way towards him as he lift his head up. You talk as in we're gone. As if we're gonna what? Boge. Isn't that my jersey? Oh yeah, you left it when you came over two nights ago. And mine was still wet. And you thought it was a good idea to wear my jersey today. Yeah, I look better in your jersey than you do anyway. Ha. Huh. Why you? They started bickering back and forth and chased each other around the gym. Eventually, Hinata made a mistake and ran into the club room where he was inevitably cornered by the blueberry-eyed setter. Where are you gonna run now ha? Huh? Kageyama paced his steps towards Hinata so slow, it felt like a predator was ready to pounce. <laughs> yeah I will. Since you look so good in my jersey. I'm gonna make you watch yourself moan my name in it. Wait. Hinata was finally cornered with nowhere to run as Kajima had one hand pressed against the wall and the other holding Hinata's face, slowly leaning in. I can't. You look too fucking cute in my shirt. Can. Before Hinata could finish, the setter cut him off, connecting their lips as Hinata let out a soft whimper between the kiss. But what about practice? Yeah fuck practice, come on. Kuro Ken. Kenma who just got out of the shower immediately went to the closet and blindly took a shirt to wear as he had his game on pause and wanted to finish it. Kenma did you shower? Yeah. As Kuro walked into the room, he saw the small setter playing a game in his overly sized jersey. Kozume. I've already showed Tetsu. Let me finish this. I'll cuddle later. That's, it's not that. As the captain was stuttering between his words, it caught the setter's attention. Are you okay? Uh. It's just, you look so cute in my jersey. Huh? Kenma looked down to see a familiar jersey but the number and the sizing was different. Oh sorry. I'll change off to this. No no keep it on. You should wear my jersey more often. TSK. Come here already you big baby. Oh I who the fuck are you calling a baby? You. Coming from someone who can't even fit half of a man-sized shirt. Shut up. Kuro went up and sat behind the gamer, wrapping his arm around Kenma's waist, whispering in his ear. But I mean it, you look cute in my jersey, kitten. Kenma's face began to flush. Ashi <laughs> Ten. A Shijima just got home and went straight to the room where Tenda probably was. Tenda. Wakatoshi-kun. Oh. Oh. Nice shirt. Thanks. Awkward staring. A uh, Wakatoshi-kun. Yeah? You uh, got a little something staring at me. Where Tenda pointed, the captain immediately looked down and noticed a bulge. Shit. What's up with that? You wearing my jersey with your hair down is. It's just. A sight to see. Um? Come and take a closer look then. Are you gonna help me with my problem? Otherwise I might end up doing too much. Oh be my guest, do as much as you want. Tenda Satori. Ashijima began walking towards the blocker with a smirk on his face. What am I gonna do with you? Sakuatsu. Sakusa stood outside the theater, up against the wall, with his hand in his pockets as he was waiting for a certain blonde setter to show up. Omi Omi. Hey Tsumu. At first glance, Sakusa hadn't noticed the jersey. They had both entered the cinema and sat down where their seats were all the way at the back. It was when Sakusa turned to pass a drink that the yellow-green jersey was highlighted in the dim lights of the cinema. Are we watching that new Demon Slayer movie? Omi? Yeah. Yeah Demon Slayer. Are you, okay? You. That's my jersey right? Oh. oh yeah sorry I forgot to tell you I wore it by accident when I was rushing out. I'll wash it clean. I promise. Huh? I don't care about that right now. 
How do you look better than I do in my own jersey? Uh, does me wearing your jersey turn you on? Don't provoke me Miyatsumu. But Omi. The blonde setter placed his hand on the inner thigh of the ace. He guided his hand towards a place where he felt something hard and began rubbing on it. Whoa. Stop it. Horny I see. And whose fault is that? Definitely not mine. I did absolutely not. Before Atsumu could finish, he felt a hand grabbing his neck, stopping his words from coming out as Sakusa pulled him close to the point where they were face to face. I told you not to provoke me. And what are you gonna do about it Kiyomi? That's not the name the audiences are gonna hear you call me later. Wait. You're gonna? Right here baby. Sakusa took both Atsumu's hand and held it behind the setter's back, as Sakusa began to tease the inner thigh. So why don't we practice your ability to keep quiet? Tsukiyama. Hiding the the deepest part of the library where it was quiet, Tsukishima was listening to music waiting for his freckled boy to show up so they can start on studying for the next test. Tsuki. Shut up, yams. We're in a library. Gomen Tsuki. As Yamaguchi appeared in front of Tsuki, the blocker immediately felt his face getting red, as he rest his head on his hand that was on the table, cupping his cheeks in an attempt to hide. Why are you in my jersey? Ah? Oh shit I must have taken the wrong jersey. I'll go and... Tsukishima stood up and grabbed the pinch server's arm before he could walk any further. Huh? And make me wait another hour? I think not. I'm sorry. What are you sorry for? For wearing your jersey? Tsuki grabbed Yamaguchi and pinned him up against the wall as the blocker grabbed the face of his boyfriend pulling him close. Yeah you should be sorry. But for not wearing my jersey more often. Tsukishima tilted Yamaguchi's head up with his thumb and started planting soft kisses on the neck of the freckled boy as he let out a soft moans. Tsuki we're in a library. All the more you should be quiet right? Yaku Lev. Oh I Lev. I'm coming. Lev wanted to practice his receiving with the help of his libero boyfriend, at the gym as Yaku was waiting for the self-proclaimed spiker to get done changing. If you take any longer I'm gonna go home. Wait. I'm here. Lev came out of the changing room with his eyes wide open. Um? Is something wrong? Oh no it's... Just that you look good in my jersey. Ha. Huh. The libero looked down to see that he was in a jersey that was too big for him but it was so comfortable that he hadn't realized it. Ah oh shit I took the wrong one. One sec I'll change. Hey wait. Lev blocked the entrance to the changing room and held onto Yaku's arm. Oh I Lev. Is it okay if we do it right now with you in my shirt? It? Yeah it. Lev picked up his libero who then had his legs strapped around the spiker's waist as they met eye to eye. Idiot. We're in school. I know, but Yaku-san is good at keeping quiet so that shouldn't be a problem right? I. As Lev walked into the changing room, closing the door behind him, Yaku was trying his hardest to hide the flush that was obviously taking over his cheeks. Sorry Yaku-san. I can't help it when you look this cute. But you're receiving crack. That can wait. I promise I'll take any kind of drill you throw at me later. Lev sat down on a bench with Yaku still on top of him and the libero adjusted to now straddling the spiker as they connected lips. Just don't go so hard or there won't be any drill at all. Can't promise that but I'll try. Osasuna. In the kitchen, Osamu was busy making a nigerus as Suna made his way to the living room after taking a shower. Sunarin, do you want some? Yeah. What do you wanna watch? You can pick tonight. The twin made his way to the living room with a plate of anigiris. Your name? Osamu Mia. No you idiot, the movie your name. OLMFAO sure. After putting down the plate of food, Osamu noticed that Suna was not wearing the right jersey number. Oh I. Isn't that mine? Huh? Oh the jersey. Yeah. I got sick of 10. So I added one. For some reason we have the same jersey but you wearing my number is making me feel some type of way. Guess it's marking your territory. Yeah. Can I mark you somewhere else? The spiker placed a hand on the blocker's shoulder, gently pushing him back till he was basically laying down on the sofa as Osamu climbed on top. You know you can mark me anywhere you want. Can I now? 
Suna wrapped his arm around Osamu's neck and pulled him into a lip lock as the spiker's hand began trailing down and slipping it under his own jersey. The feeling of his lover's cold hands coming in contact with his skin made the blocker whimper between kiss as Suna began running his hands through Osamu's hair. Wear my jersey more often. I'll think about it. Oh you'll definitely wear it more if I leave a good memory of you wearing it. Better leave an impression then. Don't bet on it. I will. Boku Aka. Hey hey hey. I am the best. Did you see that Akashi? Yes Bakuto san. Yes you are. Both Bakuto and Akashi were at the gym playing ball with the team and it had finally come to an end as everyone made their way into the changing room. As Akashi was digging through his bag, he realized he had forgotten to bring his spare shirt to change. Ah shit. I left my spare at home. Here. Wear my jersey. I've got another one. You sure? We're both going to my place anyway. You can change into something else after. Right. Thank you. Akashi took Katero's jersey and put it on realizing it was a little too big for him with the aces scent still on the jersey. Akashi. Yes Bo. You. Look. Cute. I look what? Bakuto who was visibly blushing couldn't help but dragged Akashi into the washroom as his teammate throw a confused look at them. Oh I. Where are you taking me Bo? Upon reaching the toilet, the ace placed a hand behind Akashi's head, the other on his back before kissing and pinning the setter against the wall, preventing the impact. Barely escaping between kisses, Akashi called out to the captain, grabbing onto his arms, as he inevitably gave into the kiss and deepened it. I'm sorry Kashi. I. I couldn't hold back seeing you in my jersey. I want you to bow but. Let's finish this at home. No, we're going one round right now. Bakuto Katero. How do you expect me to walk home with a boner, Kiji? I. Okay fine. Come here. Akashi traded places with Bakuto and had his captain pinned up against the wall as the setter planted kisses trailing downwards. You better return the favor when we get home. Bet on it Kashi. You thought. Very NSFW content ahead. You have been warned. Kamona. <laughs>